All right, what's going on, everybody? Physio Trader here. Uh, the market is closed, uh, but let's go ahead and let's set up a watch list for tomorrow. Uh, today is the 8th of June, so let's set a watch list for the 9th. So let's take a look. All right, so if you're new to the screen, this is a Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge platform. I've got my scanners over here on the left. That's what I use throughout the day. Right now, obviously, there's a lot more volume because we've seen this, so the day is closed. Um, and then these six charts, they are all linked. Uh, right now, I've got Shopify. I'm actually going to do this one last. Um, but these six charts, they are all linked. We've got the two minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the 60 minute, or hourly, and the daily, weekly. And so let's kind of take a breakdown from the top. So uh, with um, you know, with the S&P 500, uh, we're using the ticker symbol SPY to represent that. Um, we are headed down. There's a lot of storm clouds in the area. The hurricane, so to speak, is is a brewing. Uh, there's a massive increase in inventory, the highest inventory influx we've had um, in, in the lowest demand we've had for housing for, I think, like the last 20, 22 or 23 years they're reporting. Um, but again, we're, we're sticking by this, this infamous $407 mark that has been an area before. The question is, I think we're going to to get another you know so if you can see here some downward moves pop up downward move really strong downward move massive massive pop up and again this is just as the government and mainstream media is basically you know facilitating this narrative that you know in inflation is not a concern which is laughable but um, right here, these last two weeks have been a lot of sideways action as we wait for the next CPI release, which is expected to come out this Friday. And I think we're going to get a lot of sideways action for the next couple days anyway. But let's take a look at the daily again. I mean, look at all of this sideways action. It's just the choppity chop, just up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I don't think we're going to get a, a basis point above 415 or, or 418 or under 406 until we have a directionality. However, come Friday morning when that, uh, that information is released at 8 30 uh, Pacific Standard Time I think it's Pacific Standard Time or no I'm sorry Eastern Time uh, New York Time uh, market opens up at 9 30 so it'll come out an hour ahead of time when that information comes out I do expect there to be a massive gap to the upside but realistically it's it's probably going to be a gap to the downside if they at all in the slightest semblance kind of report anything of the truth and that is that inflation is running rampant but again we've talked about it before i've talked about it before it is not in their best interest to you know notify the entire world that inflation is running rampant because then they'll have to increase the cost of living adjustments for all those social security beneficiaries as well as others and because of that they're gonna lie and you know that they're gonna lie about it and they're gonna you know you know, manipulate the numbers as always. So, um, but again, looking over here at the Qs, I mean, almost identical chart we've got over here, uh, the QQQs represented by the NASDAQ. Um, again, a lot of sideways action. Again, I do not anticipate a break above 310 with any sort of strength or stability. Um, and, and sadly enough, we, we do have this uh, support line here. If we do break above it to the upside, I mean, then we have this resistance line at uh, 316.30, and then we have this down sloping 50 period average. Again, this is a daily chart. So again, realistically, I'm hoping for a gap uh, a gap down below two at 290. I mean, it would actually be horrendously well. I mean, I know it sounds terrible, but um, things are not cheap enough. Um, things are not cheap enough. And, and realistically, let me kind of rephrase that. Things have not gotten bad enough that people have started altering their spending habits. And because they're not altering their spending habits, they're just willing to get into credit card debt um, and they're still willing to buy. Well, companies have that pricing power. And again, a company, uh, their fiduciary is to their shareholders. And the shareholders are saying, hey, if you can get by with charging people more money and people are going to pay, then, then you know, charge them more money and make them pay. So again, until people change those spending habits, it's not going to get any better. So um, it looks like a lot of the American people need to get kicked in the teeth uh, through their 401ks and their trust funds and everything else until they start to realize that uh, it's not a good time. So next up, Amazon. Amazon did its split. Uh, a lot of uh, buying, you know, positivity, this little nice w shape. Uh, double bottom um, pattern right here. But again, uh, this is all in anticipation of the split. Well, a lot of the market kind of made a, a nice sizable bounce, but we do have this in, uh, this split. And uh, since then we've done nothing but trail long, but this big massive line that I myself and many, many others are gonna be watching is that 120 line. Uh, $120 per share on Amazon has been kind of in your face again. I'm thinking that we're gonna retest this again tomorrow, being Thursday. And then um, at that point, that's when we're gonna get direction Again, I think tomorrow we're going to bounce around it. We're going to kind of, you know, dance around the line. We're going to kind of tiptoe the line. We may even get a little bit below, you know, 119.50, 119.80, even 119. But I don't foresee us, you know, breaking 
you know, this, this down sloping trend line or anything like that until come Friday. And then again, um, if, you know, if they, they price it even in the semblance of being accurate, then uh, the, the market is going to go down and it should go down quite a bit. Um, I do not believe the market is priced in real inflation. They've priced in the 8% that people have talked about. And uh, I, I feel like I see more and more puff pieces coming out talking about how inflation, the, the infamous soft landing is not only obtainable, but we are there. That's laughable. Um, but again, uh, don't underestimate the, you know, how much the, the government can, can, you know, convince the, the daily person what they're doing is is legal, ethical, and, and good to happen. So uh, Tesla, again, kind of a, a little like indecision candle right here. Uh, this is a weekly chart. So, you know, we're, we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. Uh, twice now we've tried to break above 750, uh, not able to do that so far. So again, here's the daily chart. So really, really close on Friday to get above 800. And then again, we've been dropping, dropping again, almost in one day, gone from 800 down to a 700. So still a lot of whipsaws in Tesla. That's why Tesla options are so, you know, juicy right now to trade with. But again, I trade those options. I'm not investing those options or holding leaps or anything like that. Um, however, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, if we get sub $500, I would, I would be more than competent willing to risk a base case and at that point i'm definitely going to be like you know what i'm gonna throw some shares in there in the retirement account not my trade account but i'll, I'll throw some shares in there and see if we can boogie with it so um but other than that tesla same thing i mean we're, we're kind of just footing the bill everything like i said look at this just one two three four days going sideways today nice big upward move and then it just a meltdown there the rest of the day again we just have a, you know, again, kind of a, a boring day waiting to see what exactly is going to come of that CPI lie, uh, you know, data release on Friday. So uh, next up, we've got uh, Alibaba. So Alibaba, I drew this trend line a long, long time ago, actually. It looks, looks like almost at the peak. And uh, we've been honoring this channel pattern for a long time. And then this is when the Chinese, you know, issues with Chinese companies have really kind of gotten worse. And we've been way under this trend line today. We have had a massive move, about a 15% move on the day with Alibaba, which has brought us to that that inner channel. So I do think actually, you know, with, with so much, you know, volume is elevated, not as much as we would need. Not nothing like this one was here. Um, again, these are weeklies and the week is only halfway up. So we do have plenty of time for that volume to get back high, because if you look at this, this is the daily. So it is not, um, you know, unheard of to see if we will reclaim this uh, this upward trend line. I'm actually thinking we're gonna get a retest. Um, but again, it could get very ugly very quickly if, kind of split the difference on that one. So, you know, today we gapped up. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we do make another move to the upside, but then Again, if you follow the the uh, the 30 minute, this thing has been basically just honoring the eight period average, uh, the eight period simple moving average that is at this little yellow line. It has been honoring that all day. So every day, it, you know, even this one time it broke below it and then it got gobbled right back up to the upside. So uh, sadly enough, I was actually watching it right around here. So could have got into it, um, but I, I wasn't ready to hold it the whole day. And I certainly did not expect it to go another $10 per share. Of course, I would have thrown some money in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, next up INTC Intel corporation, I think it was down around 5% today. So yeah, Intel down 5%. They're building another plant, building another plant in my home state of Ohio. Um, we, we do have this, um, you know, on the weekly chart that is, we do have this really strong, you know, $43.50 line as a, um, an area of support. You know, once we have broken that, we're going to quanta classify this one as a resistance line. Um, but you can see here, lots of lower wicks got gobbled right back up. But again, I think this might be a little bit different. Um, as far as from a, a strong, you know, support line, I'm really eyeballing this line. Now, of course, an argument could be made for this, but this is like a down sloping line. Crazy. Down sloping line, I would not be... I mean, hey, if this thing wants to get down to twenty-eight dollars a share, that would be a nice, a nice buy opportunity. Of course, that'll be a, a quite a while before we get there, 
Um, but again, not not to be unheard of. We've seen things have certainly crashed and they can stay uh, suppressed for a while. It's just it's not on the watch list today. But Netflix, that was a Netflix having a little bit of a turnaround. Not necessarily a good day, but a little bit of a turnaround. I think it was, yeah, 160. I thought it was 170. Hey, up 160, up to 204. Ain't nothing but a thing. Um, next up, AMD. So AMD and NVIDIA, they've been kind of running running pretty well they, they keep pushing i thought this one you know we, we were definitely making a strong push above 110 failed to make that break and uh got down to almost 100 flat again today we've been dancing around that that 100 dollars line for quite a while um so the question is is you know can we can we you know reclaim that again i think it all comes down to is is what's going to happen this one however i would love to see us gap below this 84 dollars mark just because this has definitely been a very clear cut support line at this point um and again if this one wants to drop 20 percent to get there um you know it, it's one of those things that it's like okay is, is it a buy opportunity at that point i would love to get it sub 60 but i don't know looking at a weekly um yeah, I mean, even if we could break the $84 mark, we, we have the 73, which is going to hold a very strong support line. That's just thinness. I don't know why this one is so defaulted to be fat, but the resistance is thin. Drives me nuts. Um, but, um, you know, actually, even if you don't get that, the problem with this one is it's like, there's no other like support with this simple moving average. But I, I, again, if we go a couple more days, this one's going to, you know, keep going up so uh, we'll see a um, couple more so one that I was actually you know eyeballing last night I actually text my brother about was Carvana Carvana has got a lot of really low um, I just collapsed this was the the pandemic this is a weekly chart and you know the annoying thing was I actually lost quite a bit of money shorting this thing because I was like this is unreal um, it does not deserve to be a $300 company I think I was shorting it kind of in this area here now I would have held like puts or something, but that is, I never expected it to go from 360 back to sub 25. So, um, huge, huge mover. Of course, you know, when, when you start to retest your COVID lows, a lot of people got really excited about that, which is why I think this bounce is happening over a 35% short interest. So there is an opportunity if we do start breaking above some certain key levels, which I'll show you on the daily, then, um, um, you know, that there is a, a, actually a pretty good opportunistic period, in which case, um, Let's see, is there like a segment line? There we go. So, like in this, where's that segment line there? So it's a little bit easier to draw these real quick on light speed, which I do like a little bit better. Um, so we're getting in this channel pattern, of course. Uh, it's hard to see, let's see, um, but you know, we, we did have a, a much bigger, you know, purchasing day. And then it looks like the, the bears are kind of taking control on that one. But again, if you want to talk a risk first reward at this point, uh, it's actually a really good RVR on this one, because again, a $24 entry point, 24.30, 24.40, or even a $23, 23.50 would even be ideal. Get in 23, 23.50, sub 22, you know, take your dollar fifty loss on that one. But your upside is you know, if we break above this trend, this downsloping trend, um, which of course I would not make any big swing trades until after Friday's uh, news. Of course, you can take a little bit of a risk, but if you're wrong, it's going to drop even more. Um, but if not, um, I'm thinking we, we cross this $30 mark, you know, 29, sure, a little bit, that'll break it down, but you cross 30. Um, actually, let's say this, this one right here was a big guy that, that kind of stopped. So let's see, what's the high on this? The high on that is 3064. So you cross 3075 and you are going to start triggering a lot of stops. Uh, the more stops you trigger, the more the short interest is going to have to be forced to, uh, to cover those shorts. And then, of course, you might get yourself a little bit of a gamma squeeze. Not saying it'll be a full blown out short squeeze or anything like that, but um, we've definitely seen that some of these especially in the last market we've had in the last two years, we can definitely get some legs on that. And uh, you very well could, you know, I don't want to say you could double your money overnight because I'm not expecting that, but uh, you, you certainly could get uh, quite the move with Carvana. Downside is, is if you are a fundamental trader, I believe the fundamentals are pretty poor. Uh, quite pathetic market cap, 4.7, small cap, enterprise value, 10.3 billion, beta is 2.59, 189 uh, million share float, total uh, shares outstanding, total float, 88 million. That doesn't even make sense. How can you have 87 million float and uh, 188 million shares outstanding? 
121% held by institutions. That is interesting. I, I Okay. Talk about naked shorts right there. So um, that is interesting. I did actually look. I pulled up some, uh, some information uh, yesterday from... Uh, I think I was looking at the K9 uh, file forms, and the CEO and the CFO and the COO all sold, surprise, surprise, sold um, a majority of their ownership shares at around 360 340 and $380 per share. And two days ago, they bought up about twice as many shares as they sold um, at the $25 mark, $26, $29, $30 mark. So uh, Nothing like selling at the top and buying at what very well may be the bottom if you look at two days prior. So, um, you know, talk about insider trading. It, I mean, if that's that's the case, they might as well have been made by Nancy Pelosi herself. Um, next up, uh, Marathon Petroleum Corporation, MPC. So this thing has been an absolute monster move. Um, uh, you know, fun fact, this is uh, headquartered in Finley, Ohio, where I got my doctorate. Um, but the, the interesting part about this one is I, I never even heard, well, I, I knew about the stock, of course, but I never traded it. And my entry point was at $14 and 13 cents or something like that. Um, no, it says lowest 1526, but that is not true. I got it in 14. I don't think it takes for account, uh, pre-market trading. Um, but I got this bad boy at so cheap. It's like, it, it was unreal. Yeah, I definitely got it in the 14s. Uh, it was pre-market. I did get it. It was 14s, but I got this bad boy at the literal bottom, um, and I certainly do not have it now. I actually think I sold it at like 19 or something in like three days, and I made like a massive move. Um, the bottom of the COVID pandemic. Anyway, um, oil has been on a nonstop grind, of course. You know, thank them. Everybody else, you've got massive uh, uh, oil bills and everything else when you get into the um you know filling up your car but hey let's take a look so um this thing's been on a grinder i remember i was actually watching this too this is a daily chart by the way i was on i was remember looking at this when we we kind of retested this 80 um, my order was at 79 it never got filled super disappointed given the fact that we went up to 116 115 today um but uh this thing has just been breaking all-time records for you know i mean every other day i get an email all you know all-time high broken a record all-time high um it looked a little bit different when this was a really, you know, a, a small but but green candle. You know, the, the farther we're getting away from this line, eventually, if we get a little too outstretched, uh, this thing gets over 124. No more red days besides today. It gets above 124 in the next four days. I'm definitely going to look at opening a short position. I don't necessarily want to short anything that's going to be steamrolled like that, but eventually things are going to start turning on this. Uh, taking a look at, um, I mean, look at that weekly chart, though. That weekly chart screams getting awfully overextended here. Um, actually, I'd be kind of curious. Sorry, I'm going to do this one. Let's see. Relative strength. Oh, do we have the RSI on this? Oh, oh I already have it. So um, I, that's it. So I have it here. I have it invisible because I don't like to keep it on the chart. Like to me, that looks useless. I don't know if you can see that down there. Um, so I, I'll like hi highlight it for you guys. Anyway, if you look in kind of the ledger thing over there, right over here, um, just kind of as you scroll through, it'll tell you what the RSI 14 is. And I think we're like pretty darn high, 89, so 88.75. So this definitely is overextended. This thing gets over 92. That is a time to open up a little bit of a short position, in my opinion, uh, not financial advice, um, just, just a dude. Um, but so last but not least, let's go back to the infamous shop. Um, this is Shopify e-commerce Shopify. So Shopify announced um, many moons ago. So this thing was at a, a $1,700. This one's interesting because this one was a $1,700 uh, price tag um, at, at you know its all-time highs. I think this is COVID. So um, it's interesting when when the federal government stops printing money, the companies that are not as profitable are, are losing money left and right. So massive dip right here. And then, <clears throat> so this is a weekly chart. Of course, we are, you know, entertaining this. Today we had a, a little bit of a green day, 2.82%, because um, the eight, the 6K came out that does state that, um, the 6K came out stating that the uh, 10 for one stock split has been approved eventually by the board. And we will see, let's, um,
so we'll see. So this is a nice little bear flag here, which is actually a, a bearish, you know, trend line here. I mean, just down, even though we flagged up to this time and then boom, back down she went, flagged up, boom, back down she went, flagged up. So I'm not looking to buy long at this point. Again, there's too many storm clouds in the area. But I mean, again, if this thing wants a retest sub 300, just a, what, a couple days ago, this thing wants to break 300, get to a uh, new lows in a long time. Um, that would be interesting. Might even be interesting if this thing could really get down this low. All right. Ooh. We'll see. Let's see. Sorry, I'm doing this kind of all in real time because I normally don't look at shop, but it's it's one of those that it's getting almost Fibonacci. Let's do a Fib retrace. We'll start at this when I think this is what 2018. All right, so seems like every time there was earnings, it was in a different, uh, different uh, Fibonacci level here. But so you can see, um, big retracement here. I put the all-time high at the high, and then uh, retracing down. Uh, what we can do too? I don't know if I ever do this one. Nah, doesn't matter. I won't do it. So. Um, something to be interested about but again if you sorry I'll go back one more time look where Fibonacci line came from also this support line I know it's far far away but again if we have enough storm clouds and we get a, a drop from 1700 to 300 who's to say we can't go from 400 to you know 1500 or 150 if this thing gets down here that's going to be one of those chart signals that just screams gobble it up um, and, and you just, you, you totally take the risk if this thing wants to get back down, just, uh, you know, lose five years of, uh, of gains. Oof, that'd be brutal. So we'll see. It, it's hard to say because the government never really follows through with this promise of, of quantitative tightening. It only goes through with the quantitative easing side. So that's it for me. That is the watch list. I will build up a little bit better numbers in the future for tomorrow morning. But, uh, if you have any questions, reach out. Thanks so much. Catch you all next one.